I mentioned earlier, and I like to say it this way. Voiceover. Well, let, let me back up. Apple products in general, whether whether you can whether you have sight or not, Apple products can completely revolutionize the way that we work, that we play, that we learn, that we communicate, that we uh, design, that we express ourselves, all of these things, they, they truly are empowering. They truly are life-changing. I think the fact that we've got over 200 people registered, over 100 here, proves that people get that. You know, they recognize the empowerment that can come from knowing how to use these devices properly. I was told once by a, a colleague that nothing is more fun than finding out that you can do something independently that you previously thought you could not do. And I, I, that, that happens constantly for us when we're using these Apple products. Apple has, as John mentioned earlier, Apple has baked accessibility right in to every product. Every Apple product that is sold is accessible. Every app that Apple designs is accessible. Okay. Now there are some third party apps that may not be, but every app that is designed by Apple has accessibility built right in. There are a number of accessibility features available to Apple users. Okay. From the zoom magnification, you can invert colors. You can, there's a, a switch control for those who, you know, don't have the use of their hands or have, you know, struggled to do that. Um, there are, of course, hearing uh, devices. There are, you know, accessibility features. Uh, learning, just, just a number of them. And, of course, the one we're focusing on is VoiceOver. Now, VoiceOver is a gesture-based screen reader on iOS, first and foremost. It can also be controlled with keyboards, braille displays, and even handwriting. And we're going to talk about those things later on in the course, much later on in the course. It is our belief that wherever it is possible to do so, people learn the on-screen gestures first. If you've got reasonable use of your hands, that is what we believe is the best way to learn voiceover. And I'll tell you why. What it gives you is an appreciation for the way the screen is set up. And for the first time in your life, you can interact on an equal level playing field with your sighted family, friends, coworkers, what have you. If, if somebody says to you, that icon is at the bottom right corner of the screen, it really is. And you can find it just as easily as a sighted user could as long as you know you're left from your right. So there's no reason that we, we can't have a completely level playing field, but we've got to learn the on-screen gestures. I'd like to talk about just how baked in voiceover really is, okay? Because most of us, if we have never had voiceover yet at all, we probably are gonna have some sighted assistance in setting it up, whether that's at an Apple store, if you have one near you, or, you know, if you don't, maybe it's, you know, at a Best Buy, or maybe it's just a family member or a friend, whatever. But I want to tell you that going forward, by the time you've completed this class, you'll be able to know voiceover well enough that you can set up your own devices. And, you know, Apple stores are wonderful. And, and people like Lynn, you know, who either did work or are still working at them are, are just fantastic people. Uh, but if you're like us, like we don't have an Apple store within an hour and a half of, of where we live. So I've always ordered my devices online, you know, from Apple. And I can set them up entirely on my own. Okay, when you turn on your device, every single device, iPhone, Apple TV, Mac, all of them, there is immediately a way to turn on voiceover right out of the box and to set up your device with voiceover. And that includes face ID or touch ID. It includes, you know, creating an Apple account if you've never created one, all of those things. And, and you know, we're going to talk about those things in other ways. 
Uh, but I just want to point that out, that it, it is fully accessible right away. Now, one of the things um, that we're going to cover as we progress through this class is we're going to talk about Apple's iCloud service. If you've never created an Apple account or what we would actually, what Apple calls an Apple ID, if you've never created an Apple ID, we suggest that you do so because an Apple ID is truly your gateway to all of Apple's incredible digital services and to, to iCloud, which is its cloud service, as well as a lot of other features even on your device will work best if you have an Apple ID. So if you've never created one, if you're not comfortable yet using VoiceOver on your iOS device for something like account creation, uh, you can go on another device that you are comfortable with and you can go to appleid.apple.com in any modern web browser and you can create one that way. If you are comfortable with using VoiceOver on your device, then you can do it right on your Apple device from settings or, or system preferences if it's a Mac. But it is something we highly encourage as we get started. Now, one of the things I have here on the agenda is to talk about turning VoiceOver on and also unlocking your device, okay? So I want to actually start with turning VoiceOver on because, again, I feel that even though you would technically have to unlock your device first, probably if you can't even do that yet, then, then you've got some sighted assistance at this point, you know, somebody helping you out to get started. So I want to go to the different ways to turn VoiceOver on and off. Now, if you can see, uh, you can do it from settings. You just go to settings and then you scroll down to accessibility. And then you tap on voiceover and then there'll be a little a little switch. You just slide it to, to on if you have sight or sighted assistance. And you're going to get a message saying that voiceover changes the gestures. And, and we've already briefly mentioned that, but we're going to go much more in depth. Uh, so that's the way we'll call the sighted way to turn voiceover on. What if you can't see? All right. There's a, a few different options. If you uh, if you have Siri working on your device, you can invoke Siri. Of course, there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, depending on your settings, uh, you might have Hey Siri set up. And I paused on purpose because I got a lot of Apple devices here, HomePods and so forth, and I didn't want to <laughs> wake them up. Uh, but you use that phrase, and then you could say, turn on voiceover or turn voiceover on. OK, and. Um, if you don't have that activated, that that hey feature, uh, you can also you can hold down the Siri button, which for most of you now will probably be the side button. Not the, the, the volume buttons on the one side, but the opposite side with just one button. OK, on an iPad, it's the top button. If you have a home button still, if you have a device with a home button, then you hold that down. Uh, but for everybody else, it's going to be the side button on an iPhone, top button on an iPad, and you're going to hold it down and then you're going to say, turn on voiceover. So that's another way to do it. All right, we've given you two ways. One way with, with sight or sighted assistance, another way with Siri. The third way is, is actually my favorite way, the way I do it most often, certainly on my own devices, and that is what we call the accessibility shortcut. Now, the accessibility shortcut is a triple click of one of two things. It's either if you have a device with a home button, you're triple clicking the home button. That literally means you're pressing the home button three times quickly. Doesn't have to be lightning speed, but you know, quick enough that it's going to be interpreted as, as three clicks, presses of the home button. If your device does not have a home button, such as the iPhone 10 or newer, the iPad Pros, or the recent iPad Airs or Minis, uh, they have a top button. They don't have a side button, okay? So you're gonna press the either top or side button three times quickly on, on those devices. And that will allow for, you can set that to any one of a number of different accessibility features. That's why it's called the accessibility shortcut, because you can set it to do different things. But one of the things 
that it can be set to do is to turn voiceover on and off. Now, the really cool thing I mentioned to you earlier, and see, we were going somewhere with this. I mentioned to you earlier that it's possible to set up a brand new Apple device right out of the box with voiceover. Here's the cool thing. When you first take that device out of the box, if it truly is brand new, or even if it's you know certified, used, factory restored, whatever the case may be, the accessibility shortcut will automatically default to voiceover, but only if you do it during setup, all right? If you have missed that, if, if you haven't done it during setup, once the device is completely set up and you are on your home screen, you won't have the accessibility shortcut set to voiceover by default. You have to go in there and set it yourself, all right? So if somebody has set up your Apple device for you without voiceover, and then they say, here you go, it's ready to use, and you try to triple click, not going to work, okay? You then have to say, hey, go into settings, accessibility, voiceover, uh, and, and uh, not voiceover, I'm sorry, settings, accessibility, and then clear at the bottom of the uh, list of options. You don't even go into voiceover. It's just clear at the bottom. Uh, it says accessibility shortcut, and you can go into that and choose voiceover. But if you do triple click during setup, when you first turn the device on for the very first time after you open the box or you factory restore it or whatever, it will turn voiceover on, and it will also choose the voiceover setting for the accessibility shortcut. So it will automatically set it to keep doing that now since you turned it on during setup. So now your triple click is automatically going to turn voiceover on and it's going to turn voiceover off. So if you have, you know, as I do, sighted family, you know, sometimes my my son or my daughter or something will say, let me see your phone and they want to do something. Well, they know they can just triple click real quickly and they can turn voiceover off. And if they give it to me and they forget to turn it back on, it really doesn't matter because I know I can triple click from anywhere and I can turn voiceover back on. And so um, that is uh, that is the uh, accessibility shortcut. And that is uh, perhaps the most popular way to turn voiceover on and off. I think if you're a serious voiceover user, uh, that's a really good setting. Um, all right. So that is how voiceover is turned on and how it is turned off and a little bit about the accessibility shortcut so that you can set that up. Now, VoiceOver works right away from the lock screen. And you know, you can bring up the lock screen, which is the first screen that you see when your device is just sitting there asleep, doing nothing, and then you decide you want to use it. And you can activate the lock screen. Again, this depends on your settings. Some people change them. Uh, but on most of the modern devices, you can tap on the screen and that will wake up the device and it'll show the lock screen. Or you can press one of the buttons like your either home button if you have it or your top or side button if you don't. Uh, you can uh, usually lift your device as well. There's a raise to wake feature uh, that when you lift up your, your Apple device, it will also uh, wake up. If you have face id set up you can just hold that up and it will unlock your phone automatically uh, except for the first time after a restart that does require a passcode now later on in this course we're going to talk about just how important it is to use those security measures face id passcode or touch id and passcode if, if, you, if that's what you have um a lot of folks who cannot see make the uninformed decision of just not using a passcode at all and therefore not using face id or touch id and the problem with that is it drastically reduces the security of your device of course but it also may actually prevent certain features from working properly there are certain features that do seem to require that and I think more and more will come. I actually have a client who told me that she was not using a passcode until iOS 15 and iOS 15, she claims, forced her to. She was not mad about it. She did it, you know, 
Uh, but she says it, it forced her to. Now, I haven't seen that. Maybe there was a way of avoiding it, but I don't recommend avoiding it. Um, I, I highly encourage using it. Um, face ID does not require eyesight. It does not require you to have real eyes or eyes at all. It does not matter whether you wear glasses or not. It does not matter whether there's lighting in the room or it's a completely dark room and you're laying in bed. The way that Face ID works without getting into the really technical aspect of it, none of that matters. Okay. It doesn't matter if you have makeup on. It doesn't matter if you shave. None of that stuff will affect Face ID. About the only thing that potentially could uh, stump Face ID a little bit is twins, identical twins. Um, other than that, you really have nothing to worry about. So, Face ID, if you've got it, it's a fantastic. Uh, feature to use, and I highly encourage it. Um, if you have Touch ID, that's also a great system, and and it's still used on many Apple devices. Uh, Touch ID is your fingerprint, of course, and it, you know really really works well, and it's still a very very reliable means of uh, unlocking your device. The lock screen, which appears though when you wake up your device, is displaying the time. Maybe some notifications, although most of the devices now, it hides the notification content until you show your face to it to unlock it, you know. Uh, but it, it will have those there so you can see, oh, I got a message, I have a calendar alert, and I have a weather alert or something, you know. And then also your phones will have a flashlight, you know, and a shortcut to the camera. But then how do we really get into the device? Whether we're using Face ID, Touch ID, or a passcode, what do we ultimately do to get into the device? Well, if we have a home button, we press that. If we don't, we need a go home gesture. And this go home gesture that you're gonna learn now is the first official gesture we're gonna teach. And then we're gonna get to what Rita was talking about with the swipes and the taps and everything. But I want to teach this go home gesture because you need to know it. And it's the way you'll unlock your phone if, if in fact, you don't have a home button. So I'm going to grab my iPad here because I want to do a little demo. But I'm going to describe the gesture first. You're going to place one finger at the very bottom of the screen. Now, I do it with either my thumb or my index finger usually. But I can you could do it with other fingers. But that's what I recommend. So... It, to be really, really detailed right now, because we're just getting started, if you hold, like, for example, right now I've got the phone in my left hand, okay? And my my palm is sort of holding it. My, my four fingers are sort of holding it on the side. My thumb is free, and I can place my thumb at the bottom of the screen, kind of near the middle, a little off to the left maybe. And I can do this, I can perform this gesture that, that we're going to teach you in a moment. I can also do it by simply taking my right hand. And uh, I notice I'm resting my thumb kind of near the speaker grill. And I got my pointer finger, my index finger free. And I can do that same gesture that I'm about to teach you. Now, what is the gesture? The gesture is you place it at the bottom of the screen. And then you slide up. Now, with voiceover on. When, in fact, you place your finger at the bottom of the screen, you're going to hear what I like to call a little blip sound. And I'm going to, I've got my iPad here. I just want to switch cases because I have my iPad in a, in a keyboard case right now, which that would still work, but I'd just rather put it in this other case. So here's my other case. Um, and I've got my iPad. Uh, I'll even show you the unlocking process because why not? Um, but when I do this, I, I place a finger at the bottom of the screen. I hear a little blip sound, and I'll try to let, um, I'll have my iPad turned up loud enough in a moment that you can hear it. It's just a little, boop, just a little sound. Once you hear that, you know you're doing it right. You just slide your finger up to the second little blip sound. It's a slightly higher pitched blip sound. And as soon as you hear that second one, you just let go, and you're home. That, that unlocks and takes you home. It takes you out of any app. It brings you back home to what's called the home screen, which is your jumping off place with all your apps. Anywhere you are, you can go home with that gesture. And on the phones, there's even a little haptic prompt. A haptic prompt means a little, almost feels like a vibration, almost feels like somebody tapping you 
on the hand that's holding the phone. And and that haptic prompt will happen in, in conjunction with the second blip that I mentioned. So let me turn my iPad's volume all the way up here. I have an iMac coming, which is going to allow me to do direct feed of the iPad. Uh, but it's on some kind of a clearance delay. I'm convinced Trainer Cliff had something to do with it. I think he called him and said, just, just uh -huh. have to say. They're not telling me what my scheduled delivery date is, Cliff. It just says pending. I don't get it. But anyway, when it gets here, we'll be able to do direct feed. But this this will work just fine. We've done this a lot. The iPad has really good sound, too. All right. I'm going to just, like, lift the iPad up to my face, and it's going to – it unlocked. I don't even know if you heard it because I hadn't turned the volume up. Monday. Now it's up nice and loud. So let's do it again. Here we go. 3.40 p.m. All right. It said 3.40. And I don't know if you heard the little unlock sound, but it did do it. And I'm on my lock screen. I have. Mm, oh, it tells me I'm in do not disturb because I am because we're teaching. Messages. And I have some messages. Unlock. Oh, no, that's just the control. OK, that's right. I don't have my notification set to show on the lock screen when I'm in do not disturb. Now, we're going to place a finger at the bottom and you're going to hear a little blip. Ready? Here we go. Not that one. That one. That one. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Just boop, just that little. That's what you get when you place your finger at the bottom of the screen. Three, and that means you know you're doing it right. Now I'm going to slide up when I do it. Messages. Message. Text field is editing. And it unlocks me. It puts me where I last was, which is in the messages app. I'm going to go home with that same gesture now from messages. Dictate image. And now I'm on the home screen. Tag and I have uh, widgets, which we'll learn about later. So I have some of my, right now it's displaying email, probably because I've gotten tons of it today. Um, and that's what's showing up on the home screen alongside of my apps. But we'll we'll teach you about widgets later. So that's the first. Oh, go ahead, Rita. I'm sorry. Just to recap where he is right here. Um, when you first... Your iPhone is asleep, okay? You open your, however you do it, if you've got a cover on it or if you pick it up or whatever, normally it's set to where if you just tap the screen, unless this is turned off or whatever, but normally you just tap the screen, screen and it wakes it up, okay? But the phone is not open yet. It's it's displaying the lock screen. And if you do nothing at this point, your phone will go back to sleep. The screen That's will right. go dark. That's right. And so that is the first state of awakeness <laughs> of your phone is the lock screen. So, and it's going to display the time and the flashlight and access to the camera. Not much else. Then to open the phone, to get it to, and if you've got uh, Face ID or Touch ID, um, you know, you tap that screen, the lock screen is visible. You have to do something to get into the phone now. And you can either use Face ID or Touch ID um, or the password um, oh. now that you have to enter. Um, and then you slide up or you hit the home button. So then your phone is uh, open and you're at your, normally it'll take you to your home page. If, um, if you were in an app before, it might open that. Uh, so two states, one is locked, it's awake, but it's locked. And then the other, you have to get into it. And then through one of those uh, methods, face ID, touch ID, passcode, um, and then you slide up and your phone is now open and it's ready for business. That's right. That's right. And the the face ID, especially even touch ID, though, too, um, they happen so quickly. You know, a lot of times even sighted people don't realize anything has happened uh, because it happens so quickly. And they question, did it really protect me because I didn't even see it do anything? And uh, so when I have sighted users. Because uh, voiceover makes a little sound. I don't know if you could hear it because it happened at the same time as voiceover was announcing the time. But it makes this little sound when it unlocks, you know. I didn't really do it justice. But when, when, you, ha when you have, when I have a sighted client uh, who has Face ID, just to prove to them that it's really working, I always say, okay, let's lock your phone again. 
Now hold it up to my face and you'll see that it doesn't unlock, you know. Uh, so they know that because it happens so quickly. And then when it's unlocked, you can still be on the lock screen, uh, but it's unlocked. Now you can read your notifications and stuff if you have any. And then as Rita said, that, that home button or the, the slide up that we just taught you, place one finger at the bottom, you hear the little blip, you slide up to the second blip, and then you lift your finger and that takes you home. That's your go home gesture. And now we are on the home screen. And the home screen is where all of our apps are located and we're going to break that home screen Three, let me see 40. we got about 15 minutes i don't know if we'll get it in today or if it'll have to be wednesday we'll see but depending on the time but we'll break that home screen up into multiple parts for you so that you can understand all the various components to it Three, but before we do that Three, sorry i had decided to okay um before we do that i want to go over the most basic fundamental remember voiceover gestures that you need in order to get around. And we're going to today focus on primarily one finger gestures, all right? What finger do you use? Well, most people probably would use their pointer, their index finger, uh, which is what I would normally do. Uh, I have on occasion used my thumb for one reason or another, but usually, usually the index finger here, uh, you're gonna use that light touch that Rita talked about, because if you press too hard, you can have other things happen. Uh, you're going to keep your other fingers out of the way, as as trainer Lynn talked about. You don't want to have your other fingers bumping into the screen because there are multiple finger gestures, and so it's going to interpret those differently. Most of the navigation that we do uh, on our home screen or in apps or websites or anywhere else is going to be from left to right. That is, we swipe right with one finger to go to the next item on the screen, and we swipe left with one finger to go back to the previous item on the screen. Now, this is that gesture we were talking about. Some people call it a flick. Some people call it a swipe. It's this quick one finger movement in one direction or another, okay? And if you have your finger laying on the screen before you do that, it's going to cause other things to happen. That's why Rita said, you know, lift your finger up in between the, the flicks or the swipes, because if you don't, uh, you can end up dragging your finger around and, and activating or not activating, but, you know, touching other things. And that's fine if you want to do that. I mean, that's another way to navigate. But this one finger swipe, I believe, is the easiest and most uh, rudimentary gesture for us to learn. So my iPad has since gone to sleep. Three, forty-eight. Okay, I've unlocked it. Now it's at the home screen. And I'm just going to tap on an icon on the home screen. We'll skip the widgets for now. I love widgets, but we'll teach them later. That's not a day one thing. And I'm going to just tap on an icon. And then I'm going to start swiping right to move through the icons on my home screen. Now. Notes. Double tap to open. I touched a random icon on the screen. It wasn't the first one, but it's my notes icon. And you heard that nice little hint, double tap to open. Remember, we talked about that. When you, once you have tapped something, we'll double tap to open it. But I'll get to that in a minute. Just, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let me swipe to the right to some of the other ones. Voice memos, contacts, maps, double tap to find my stocks, news. And if double tap to open, I swipe back to the left. You'll notice the same icons in reverse. I'm going backwards. Stocks. Find my maps. <laughs> contacts. Voice memos. Notes. Reminders. Camera. Okay. Double tap to open. It's just a one finger swipe left and right. Not up and down. We'll talk about what up and down does on Wednesday. Left and right. When I swipe left and right, I also can, another thing I can do, I can just sort of tap. I can randomly tap somewhere on the screen and it will, you know. News. Stocks. Page one of five. Adjustable. See? Reminders. I can tap randomly and then I can start swiping. Note. Vote contacts. Okay, whatever I want to do. Um, when you tap on an icon and voiceover is turned on or when you swipe to an icon with voiceover on, it brings focus to that particular item. For those who can see, they'll see a, a rectangle. I think it's a black rectangle, if I remember right. 
and it surrounds the item that has the focus. That rectangle is a visual representation of what's known as the voiceover cursor. All movement for voiceover users is with the voiceover cursor. There are some random okay. random exceptions, but I'm not going to get into that right now, okay? Um, so basically, let's just su suffice it to say for now that all movement is with the voiceover cursor. So you need to get it out of your head if you're a PC user. You know that the, the, the you think about like the JAWS cursor is only for those times when you want to simulate. No, all movement on the Apple devices for voiceover users is with the voiceover cursor. So whenever you tap or you swipe, you're going to see, you're actually going to see that if you can see, you're going to see that voiceover cursor, that rectangle, selecting the item that has the focus. And this is great if you're a teacher of those who are visually impaired or if you're just working with somebody who's blind. A lot of times I'll say to somebody, because they'll say, well, where is that icon? And the icons, you might be surprised to learn, don't typically have words or, or, or they do, but it's not really the, the primary focus. I, I, I said that wrong. I don't want to mislead you. They do have words, but it's not what gets the focus. Usually the icon is a little picture or a symbol and it's a certain color. And that's how a sighted user will identify, you know, oh, it's the green uh, pencil and paper icon. You know, that's what they're primarily seeing. And some of them don't have words. Some of them, like you'll have a gear icon, uh, which is settings or a plus icon, which is new. And so if I'm working, you know, and, and, and maybe I'm telling my kids, you know, my son says, well, where do I go to do this? And I'll say, well, tap on the icon that says uh, more. And he'll say, well, there's nothing, dad, that says more. And I'll say, well, is there something with three dots? Because I know a lot of times that means more. And that's pretty universal across the OS. But every once in a while, some app developer will do something different. So if we can't find it with that sort of interpretive language, I'll say, well, here's where my voiceover cursor is. You see the thing with the black rectangle around it? That's what the icon is. Whatever that looks like, that's the one you want. And that's where it's located. So see how useful this is to work with your peers whether they can see or not. So again, what you tap on or what you swipe to when voiceover is on is what gets the focus and it's what the, the focus gets the voiceover cursor. Now, once you have swiped to it, voiceover makes it very easy to double tap to open or activate something. What was important was, you know, when I first heard back in 2009 that Apple was coming out with a gesture-based version of voiceover for the iPhone. I was so excited that I might actually be able to have an iPhone, but I also was, you know, made the mistake of, because uh, I didn't know Apple that well at the time and how important this was. I'm thinking, I'm just imagining myself like aimlessly wandering around a touch screen, you know, randomly activating stuff I don't mean to activate because everything I tap on is opening things up. But of course, Apple took care of that from day one, which is why it voiceover changes the gestures, because that's why when you tap or swipe with voiceover on, it doesn't activate the item. It only selects it. It only puts the voiceover cursor on it. Now what you got to do is you got to double tap to open or activate the item. Now let's talk about the double tap gesture. The double tap is a very quick tap, tap, very light, just quick two little taps. No holding. You don't hold your finger down. Just quick tap, tap, let go. And that is how you're going to activate things, insert things, act, open things, whatever the case may be. Now, again, Apple has made it really easy. Once you've selected an item by moving to it, you remember how to move to it? One finger swipes left and right, or just a, you know, a tap randomly on the screen. Once you've selected something, that double tap gesture does not have to be precisely on the item that's selected. You can literally double tap anywhere on the screen and it will open what you've selected as long as you don't bump something else first. Because if you do, you're going you're gonna to now select the thing you tapped instead of what you wanted, which is, again, going back to Lynn saying keep your other fingers curled and keep them out of the way because you don't want to accidentally do that. But I'm going to demonstrate for you. 3.54 p.m. Now, you can't prove that I'm doing this because you just have to go by my logo. I'm sorry. You have to just take my word for it. But I'm going to tap on an item on the home screen. Let's see. 
Books. There's books. Double tap to open. And now I'm going to go completely to the opposite side of the screen. This is a big screen. This is a 12.9 inch iPad Pro. I'm way at the other side of the screen and I'm going to double tap. Monday, October 4th, status bar item. And it's still opened the books app. And again, I just really stress that one finger double tap does not have to be in the precisely same location. Now, I wouldn't normally do what I just did and, and go to, you know, extremely the opposite side of the screen, because why? You know, what would be the point of that? But, um, uh, you know, I would prove that you can. And, and it, it's, it's important in the sense that you don't have to stress yourself out about, am I in the exactly correct location now? I want to double tap. Also, the double tap can be um, for those who might have, you know, dexterity issues or trouble doing a quick two taps with one finger, you could double tap by doing two taps with you know, one, one with uh, one finger and one with another finger, even on the other hand, if, if that's helpful. And they even have a split tap where you can tap and hold with one finger and then tap with another. And that's like a double tap. The last thing I'd like to just mention, um, and, and then we'll, we'll, you know, pick this up on Wednesday. Uh, the last thing I'd like to mention is that is the, what we've shown you right now, these one finger single tap and double tap and swiping left and right, and then uh, touching randomly on the screen. And then that, that go home gesture, that really is enough for you to start playing around on your home screens start looking through your settings and exploring and and you know using apps that you want to use obviously there are a lot of other gestures that are going to make things easier and some of them are even needed to do more advanced stuff but just to open apps and look around and and play now you have enough information to do that and look through your settings you have enough information to do that and i'd like to do i'd like to tell you about one uh, one final thing rita already told you about the the voiceover uh, help mode. I want to go over that again. Um, these help modes, because they're really important. They'll help you to get uh, help. There is a user guide, which you can go, if you're not comfortable yet with your iOS device, you go to any web browser. And what I would do is just do a Google search and cite Apple support, and then the name of the device and the word user guide. So like if you're using an iPhone, Apple support iPhone user guide iPad, Apple support, iPad user guide, whatever. And in those user guides, there is a voiceover section under accessibility. I suggest you read that first and then go back and read the rest of the user guide because like I said, you can apply what you know. But what I really want to show you is the onboard references. One of them is the help mode that Rita talked about, very similar to what's also called voiceover practice mode. Now, there are two ways to get to this. If you are, if you're comfortable with multi-finger gestures already, you can do a four-finger quad, no, four-finger double tap, yeah, to open the voiceover help mode. So if you're comfortable with, you know, gestures that use more than one finger, from anywhere that you are, you can four-finger double tap and turn voiceover help on and off. Same gesture to turn it off again okay when you're uh if you're not yet comfortable with that you can also go to settings and this is just using the stuff we learned today you just open up you, you swipe on your home screen over to settings you double tap you're going to you know either tap randomly on the screen or swipe left and right until you find accessibility and then you're going to double tap to open it and you're going to do the same thing for voiceover Find it by swiping or tapping and then double tap to open it. And under voiceover, you're going to look for voiceover practice. And you can double tap on that. And it brings you into a very similar mode as that voiceover help mode that you get when you do the four finger double tap. So I wanted to tell you both because that's using just the stuff we learned today. And when you're in voiceover practice mode or help mode, you can try different gestures to see what they do. Swipe in different directions, different numbers of fingers, and voiceover will tell you what the gestures do without actually having any um, effect on the system. And so that is a good thing to try. 
the other thing and the very last thing for today uh is that um see i'm, I'm also a preacher so i can say i'm gonna close like four times before i actually have to do it uh, <laughs> the other thing the final thing is a lot of people ask us do you have a list of all of the voiceover gestures that there are in existence? And the answer is yes, and so do you. You already have it at your disposal, you just may not know it. To find it, you go to settings, and remember now how to do that, because we're not gonna continue to say every direction every time, so I'll do it one more time. Remember, you tap or swipe left and right until you find settings, and then you double tap to open it, all right? Now you go to accessibility. Now you can use your um, inference and, and figure out how to go to accessibility. You know what that means now. Swipe or tap and then double tap when you find it. All right, now you're gonna go to voiceover, same thing. Once you open up voiceover with a what? A double tap, you're gonna swipe until you hear commands and you're gonna open that with a double tap. Under commands, you can go to all, like all commands, or you can pick just what you're interested in. They have touch gestures, they have keyboard commands, they have handwriting, they have braille screen input, they have all this different stuff. We're focused right now primarily on the touch gestures. Okay, we'll do the other stuff later. We'll get to it, but this is that you could look at all or you could look at touch gestures. When you go in there, every gesture is listed with along with what it does. It'll and they're even listed by heading. Uh, like one finger gestures, two finger gestures, three, you know, and so every voiceover gesture is available under there. We used to send out a reference with the gestures and it didn't make sense to do that because first of all, we had to remember to update them when a new change was made. And if we would forget, it wouldn't be very helpful to the people receiving it. These are always up to date. Okay. This is directly from Apple and it's already on your device. So again, settings, accessibility, voiceover, commands. And then I would pick touch gestures just because it's, it's the easiest uh, thing to do. You can see every single gesture on your device. I'm going to just jump into the Q&A and make, once an app is open, how do we get back to the home screen? So that's going to be that same go home either. If you have a home button, you can just press it. If not, that's that same go home gesture where you tap one finger, place one finger at the bottom of the screen until you hear a little blip, then swipe up to the second blip to go home. Let's remember to, uh, tomorrow at 2 Eastern is a help session if you'd like to join that. Wednesday is the next voiceover course. Uh, at the same time, same link. Use that same WebEx link that you used today and come on in on Wednesday. God bless you, everybody, and thanks for joining us.